About 30% of patients have clinical details that don't put them neatly into a diagnostic category and so in those patients where they may have what's considered unclassifiable disease based on their CT scan and their other clinical details, a surgical biopsy or a form of biopsy might be considered. Uh, the, the limitation to that is that many people would be considered not well enough to undergo a biopsy. So it probably is about 10% of interstitial lung disease patients that will ultimately have a biopsy of some sort. Yeah, so I've alluded to the fact that people may not be well enough for a surgical biopsy. Uh, it is an invasive procedure. It, invol it involves keyhole surgery um, through the chest wall and it can cause quite significant um, impacts on a physiological sense uh, for patients who are already vulnerable with quite a lot of disease. And so people uh, find that the, 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 the rigours of going through that process can sometimes cause um, a worsening in disease um, and in some cases even mortality. Uh, so, so you have to consider it very carefully when you're, when you're looking at your, the patient in front of you as to their, their fitness for surgery. So um, the obvious thing is that it's obtained in a less invasive way to the traditional surgical biopsy. So you're um, going down through the airway and you're not causing an incision in the chest wall. Um, your, um, your patients are recovering much faster from that procedure and can often go home the same day. Um, the, there are limitations in that you can cause bleeding and you can cause pneumothorax, uh, but those can be, the risk of those can be mitigated by taking careful precautions. Um, the, the other positive about about the, the transbronchial cryobiopsy is that you can get very well preserved architecture. Um, so by the sudden snap freezing of the tissue, you can get beautifully um, preserved lung structures for diagnostic purposes. Uh, so it's not beleaguered by the crush artifact that a lot of other tissue samples um, uh, that happens with the way that the, the forceps are grabbing those biopsies. So it's, um, that's its other advantage. Yeah, so um, when you look at the, the direct comparative data, there's very little data comparing the two pro procedures together. So we don't really know uh, by direct comparison that one is safer than the other. But if we look indirectly at the evidence, the cryobiopsy has a better risk profile than the surgical lung biopsy, with about a 23% risk of some sort of adverse event, most of which are minor um, airway bleeding um, and, and a, a significantly lower risk of more serious adverse events. Um, the 30-day mortality for the cryobiopsy is about 0.3% compared to about 7% um, for the surgical lung biopsy. So it does carry risks, but it appears to be more favourable than the surgical biopsy. So in the cold eye study, we wanted to find out how accurate the cryobiopsy was. Uh, to date, a lot of studies had looked at the diagnostic yield. So it, that means you take a tissue sample and you analyse it under the microscope and you get some sort of answer. But we didn't know if that some sort of answer was actually reflective of the truth. And so we wanted to compare the cryobiopsy with the surgical biopsy directly obtained from the same patients as a standard, as a means of comparing the, the, the two procedures uh, to verify that it was an accurate um, analysis that we were getting from interpreting those specimens. So we did this, we performed cryobiopsy and surgical lung biopsy in 65 patients and then in a blinded fashion had our three pathologists review every single specimen to see whether or not those two samples agreed with one another in terms of their interpretation of the findings. We also then wanted to look at the, the tissue specimen and how it uh, fared in the, the multidisciplinary discussion which is kind of considered the gold standard for making a final clinical diagnosis in interstitial lung disease. Uh, and we, we, so we put every tissue specimen in combination with the clinical details and the radiology to then come up with an ultimate diagnosis. And again, we wanted to compare how the cryobiopsy fared under those circumstances compared with the surgical biopsy. And so that was our, our aim and, and we, we, we definitely uh, achieved that goal and found that they did compare very favourably. So the agreement under the histopathological analysis was, um, was 
70%, just over 70%, um, with a weighted kappa value of 0.7, which is a very good agreement um, in the, the field of diagnostics. And then at a multidisciplinary discussion, the agreement was about 77% with a kappa of 0.64, again, showing very good agreement and really reflecting that this tissue, new means of tissue sampling is relatively accurate and can be used in the majority of patients where we think we need a biopsy to uh, help answer the question of their diagnosis.